Hey guys, it's Deborah. Oh my gosh, you guys, I have something amazing and really exciting to share with you guys. You're going to be amazed and just blessed and encouraged. And it is about our soon departure, the Harpazzo and the tribulation beginning. And I have dates. Okay. Now, when I say that, you know, I typically don't say any sort of date. I've always just said, I thought the Lord was showing me 2021 and year 5781. Now, I've been feeling two things like divided, like I've been feeling frustrated recently and confused and questioning my discernment and my, um, I guess, interpretation of scripture and the fig tree prophecy and all that stuff lately, because I'm not sure. I'm like, what is happening? The world's still in chaos and crazy, but at the same time, things are happening in a way that I wasn't sure if I know what's going on. And then you have like these really big pastors who are saying we have a million hundred billion years and 2021 is going to be amazing, full of blessings. And you have, I just watched Benny Hinn talk about, we have the Lord just showed him and woke him up and said this amazing thing to him that Jesus is coming so soon. And then that to him meant in 28 years. Okay. He just did this whole video two weeks ago that Jesus is coming in 28 years. And he's so on fire for it and on. And I think at first I was like, okay, God woke him up. He showed him. Like, I don't watch Benny Hinn, but I was like, it was amazing that he was like, God show me Jesus is coming now. Like, I thought he was coming later, but he's coming now. But now it's all about this 28 years. And I think that's part of the deception. And I want to, I was feeling frustrated because I'm like, why are, am I seeing this sooner and our community and other people are saying we have a hundred million years, a thousand years or 28 years. So I was feeling frustrated, but at the same time, this, I think this that I'm going to share with you came to encourage me and just get me out of that funk. Okay. So I just want to share this verse with you, verse with you as a disclaimer and just, you guys already know, but let's just read first Thessalonians. And I'm going to read this just before I get into the big news. <laughs> first Thessalonians five, one to seven, but of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you, meaning you don't even have to worry. Of course, you know, like I, there's no need I even write this of you, but you already know that for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. So I guess we won't know when it's coming because it's coming as a thief in the night for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them. Just got an alarm went off, sorry. Come upon them as a travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. Are we going to come upon them as a thief in the night? But ye brethren are not in the darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. So it's going to come as a thief. We should already know, but it's not going to overtake us. You are children of the light and children of the day. And we are not of the night nor of the darkness. Now, I think this for this just somehow just shot out to me. You are children of the light and children of the day. So if I'm wrong about all of this, then... I've been deceived and there's a lot of deception going on right now. Oh my goodness. I am seeing part of my frustration was seeing so many people who I know do love the Lord are being deceived in many ways. And that was frustrating for me. But anyway, here's another verse. You are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night nor the dark or to the darkness so that, so then let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be alert. I think the word actually in King James is sober and self-controlled. First Thessalonians five, five to six. Now, I'm just bringing this up because we are children of the light. And like usual, I was just finding it very strange that so many people are saying these long, far off dates, yet this community is saying, no, something doesn't seem right. And I was just down. I was doubting myself because I was like, Lord, I don't know what to think. Do I have a thousand years, a million years, or do I have a few months? And this video is just, it gave me a lot of confirmation that we are on the right track. Like when you hear this, Anyway, okay, so if anybody tells you, oh my gosh, you shouldn't be, oh yeah, the Lord's going to come one day, but who knows, it could be a million years. Just say, well, we're children of the light. I'm a child of the light, so I'm going to know. I'm going to know. Think about Elijah. Look it up, guys. Elijah, when he was raptured up into heaven and he was taken up, Harpazo caught up in a chariot of fire, um, <laughs> Elisha knew when he was going to go. And everybody, all the prophets said, you know, your master is leaving today. He knew exactly when, okay? He knew exactly when. And so this is just a preface before I get into this um, thing that I'm going to share with you because it's kind of date setting-ish. Anyway, so I'm bringing up this verse because, um, yeah, I just want to, let me read the verse and I'll tell you, tell you why. So all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction right in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Second Timothy 3, 16, 17, and then study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Second Timothy 2, 15. I'm bringing this up because I felt a lack, a lack of 
pure, just dedicated, searching the scriptures for some truth. Like, I feel like people, Christians have become, many of them are just lazy. I was probably like that myself. I don't know why God woke me up and lit a fire underneath my behind and made me just dig into the scripture. But you guys know, that's a big thing for me. Like, I don't know if there's some people maybe just don't have the intellect for it. I don't know what it is, but a lot of people are very comfortable, but just saying uh, they'll repeat a scripture and just they heard someone else say it and then they don't they just they're just comfortable with that. They're not Bereans in that way. And you have to get uncomfortable. You have to become you have to work on the laziness. OK, we're all lazy. We're all in our flesh, but we have to crucify that flesh daily and just get out of the laziness. That's what's about showing yourself approved and all doctrine is good and just we've got to not be lazy. We've got to say, OK, we're going to search. We're not going to just believe what other people say. We're going to search. We're going to dig. OK, we don't have to do this forever. You know, it's not going to be this way forever, but just for now. OK, and I'll just touch on this last part where it says rightly dividing the word of truth, because I know people get their knickers in a knot with this and like it's turned into something that it's not. I just want to just point out in Strong's Concordance, that word rightly dividing is the word orthomeo. And that word actually means, if you go down to the bottom, to cut straight. Okay. It doesn't mean to divide in the way that we think. The old King James wording, it sounds like, oh, you, you cut up the Bible in pieces, but that actually bottom, it says to make straight and smooth, to handle a right, to teach the truth directly and correctly. Okay. You're just cutting straight. You're not dividing. Even though it says rightly divide, it actually means it's not actually dividing. I'll show you some words that actually mean to divide. So you're not like cutting the Bible up, okay? So these words, G3307, which is not the word I just read, G873, and these are all other instances of dividing. See, I divide into part. This is from Strong's. Um, I separate, place apart, Separation. Okay, so these words are dividing. I'm just touching on this. This is not what my video is about. I'm just touching on it. This is where I go back to the, the digging. It's just something that's in me, but you have to match it with faith. You can't just dig. You can't just research. You have to have that other part of it. Listening to the Holy Spirit. It's They go together. Anyway, these words mean to separate, to take apart. Because you know how some people are like, hey, this book is just for the Jews. Or this book is not for us. Or that kind of thing. It actually, look up the word in Strong's. Don't just believe other YouTubers. It means to directly teach correctly and straight. Okay? And this is a little uh, write-up I read on this. Anyway, so it says here in number three, when Paul wrote this about the directly, like to Timothy, uh, you know, show thyself approve and um, yeah, all that. <laughs> it says the only scripture that could have been parsed would have been what we call the Old Testament because the gospels and the epistles did not exist as a collaborative body of work at the time. So he couldn't be talking about Matthew just being for the Jews because it hadn't been written. And he said, if the word othameo, which is what I just mentioned, truly meant to separate, we should expect to find it or a word of the same common root when the words divide, dividing or dividing are used elsewhere in scripture. So my point of this is, it is not saying, the word divide is all throughout scripture. And this is a, orthomeo is a totally different word. It just means to straightly tell it like it is, okay? So I don't want to get too far into that. That's not even what this is about. I just wanted to bring it up because I just thought it was interesting. And the verse I actually want to focus on is the part where it says to study to show thyself approved. So, so this is the part that was really important to me with relation to what I'm going to show you, which is study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Okay, so this what I'm going to show you is I'm going to link you to a video that is like almost an hour long. Don't be afraid. You will be blessed. What uh, what happened was a uh, fellow sister in Christ. She just linked a video for me to watch in Facebook. And when I watched it. It really changed so much for me. I was in tears. I've watched it several times and I was in tears and I know I have to share it with you guys. It's about us getting out of here. I'm sorry I had to ramble here for 10 minutes because it's I had to preface all of this because I did. So it is about us getting out of here in possibly March. OK, and I, I it's just stay tuned. So let me explain. So here's the description box of that video, okay? This is, this is, this person has put out one video on their entire channel, okay? And uh, let me just read this. Okay, it says, this is what they wrote. Why is the tribulation seven years? Not only was the life of Jesus cut off, but so was his ministry, both by exactly seven years to the day. Please watch this astonishing theory detailing the preciseness of God 
This theory presents event after event that tie together to the day. It covers dates of the birth, baptism, ministry, crucifixion, and return of Jesus. The number of coincidences are overwhelming. The pres this presentation was created from personal interpretation of scripture with the hope for input. See, this person is not trying to be a lone wolf. They are saying, you know, put, give me your input, which is something totally different than I've been experienced for a little while, which has been frustrating for me. I know um, my point is that this person saying, I like your input and I don't know who they are. You know, I don't know this person right now, but they are also, let me keep reading. It says, um, with the hope for input from anyone about these incredible coincidences, all the signs within this theory point to a rapture beginning of a rapture and beginning of tribulation on March 6, 2021. Nowhere in this theory is it thus say the Lord. Please share this video. Thank you. So what this person is saying, nowhere do I say thus saith the Lord. Now, have you not heard that so much lately? So recently, um, and then it's just the humbleness. Like, can they come back and say, whoops? No, most majority don't say whoops. And <laughs> most, most of them do not. Now, this person I really found really appealing in the way that they said they want an input, you know, and then the second thing, so they're willing to listen. And the second thing is they said, I'm not saying thus saith the Lord, but yeah, they're talking about a date and you will, guys, guys, you're going to be amazed. Okay. I'm going to share kind of the brief synopsis of what they're saying. And then I'm going to link the video so that you can watch it all for yourself when you have the time. It's long. It's like 40 minutes to an hour. So it took me a while to watch it, but I watched it a couple times, like bits and pieces over and over to try to make sure I understood. So that being said, I just wanted to give you that preface of it's okay that we watch. Now, should we know the day and hour? That's been debated. Like it says, no, he, Jesus didn't even know. But now that Jesus is with the father, does he know? He's now with the father. He was on the earth at the time. Maybe this March 6th date isn't correct, but I feel like what I'm, if I'm child of the light, this is what I have to share it with you guys. I just don't have a choice, but to not like, I hope I'm not being deceived. I have to show it to you guys because everything's coming together. The red heifer, it's got to be sacrificed by like, I think August we have, um, that hasn't been around for 2000 years. Okay. There hasn't been another one. The P Malachi prophecies. It's the last Pope, 112th Pope. You know, how long can he really last? You have um, the uh, fig tree generation prophecy coming up. You just have thing after thing after thing that is all culminating now. In addition to our world is basically shut down and over with. So anyway, let's get into what this, uh, this fellow YouTuber creator looking for Jesus is trying to say. And yeah, let's get into that. I will say one more thing is that, you know, I care about you guys' mental health very much. And I never want to lead somebody astray. Like I really, my heart is to say, I really, really don't want to. I'm sure most people don't, but some people just don't really feel too bad because they're just not a na naturally very compassionate person. Does that mean they're not saved? No. Does that mean they're a horrible, evil person? No. It just means they just are naturally not ex that compassionate. I'm quite compassionate and I'm concerned for people's mental health. So that said, I don't want a day to come and you to freak out and everything. But I mean, we are being a little bit heartbroken. Our world is collapsing for us and it is a little heartbreaking to wait and watch and I mean there's nothing more to it you know but I, I don't know what else to say I do think we're children of light I don't think those people talking about 28 years 100 years a thousand years what is that Apophis that guy who talks about Apophis oh, I don't remember his name Tom Horn and I think he's talking about something that's like ages away some big meteor and you just have people talking about very far off dates now maybe they're the ones who are the children of the light and seeing it I don't know but that's not what I believe so I'm just gonna share it and if it doesn't come to pass the way I thought, then I will be there for you best I can. But again, it may not be the sixth, like it might be another day, but I'm just seeing March because of so many things. Remember, that is Nissan one. That's the beginning of the year. And I've talked about this. But anyway, let's just get into this guy's chart. I'm sorry, this is taking so long. Okay, so um, you have, he, he made this chart and that brings you to the date of the rapture and then the end of everything. Okay. So, um, he worked really hard on this. So, okay. You have the decree by, by Artaxerxes, Artaxerxes. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> the decree by Artaxerxes. That's right. Begins Daniel 9, 445 BC, March 9th. He's come to these conclusions. I've not done this research, but just 
yeah, let's just go to this, like read this together. And then you can make your own decisions and do your own research. Christ's birth he has is 2 BC, September 23rd, which is the same day as the Revelation 12 sign. Very interesting. Baptism of Jesus he has at 28 AD, which is January 29th. He has Jesus' ministry and acceptable year of the Lord at 28 AD, March 14th. Crucifixion of Jesus at exactly 33 years old and Daniel 9 ends. It's 32 AD, April 2nd. Israel, and he goes into great detail why he's saying this. Israel becomes a nation. The fig tree parable prophecy begins 1948, May 14th. You have the Star of Bethlehem sign, which was two years prior to the Revelation 12 sign, September 23rd, 2015. You have the Revelation 12 sign, seven years, which is 22,520 days uh, to the great which was the day great tribulation sign. I'm not really sure. I can't remember what that means, but uh, September 23rd, 2017, which was the Revelation 12 sign. And then you have the great conjunction sign on December 21st, 2020. That just happened. You know, I've gone on about that for ages. Um, and that was literally 1,335 days. Uh, I guess it's uh, to the great tribulation. So from that day, from the day of the conjunction to when he believes the great tribulation would start, which would be, I believe the um, mid trib, like, you know, you know, there's the 42 months to the 42 months. The Antichrist reign is actually 1,335 days. Remember the Bible says like, blessed is he who makes it to the 1,335th day. Now, this is the stuff he'll go into detail, but it's really amazing. Anyway, rapture and beginning of tribulation. He has March 6, 2021. It fits. It fits you guys. I just, I, I'm not going to say the six. Okay. Just don't, I would just, unless the Lord shows you directly to think about a day, I would just, just take that part with a grain of salt. But honestly, March fits. Okay. Because um, if you know, you know, the calendar, like literally Nis God said in the Bible, Nissan one is the new year and that is March 14th. Okay. It just, it fits. That means we'd still be in 2020, but we're kind of in 2021. It's like this crazy, like everybody's right. I, I don't know. I, it just fits to me. And then you have the great tribulation begins. And then, and he means the seven years, 2,520 days after revelation 12 sign and 1,335 days after the great conjunction sign, which is amazing. Really? I mean, I guess that's not the seven years. So he's talking about the mid trip. Oh yeah. August 17, 2024. So he's talking about when that big cross comes over the United States. So isn't it interesting that right when that big cross comes over the United States, it's 1,335 days from the time of that great conjunction, something like that. I'm giving you a brief synopsis. When you watch the full video, you will love it. Okay. And then you have the tribulation ends exactly 2000 years after the baptism of Jesus, which is January 29th, 2028. Um, which is exactly 2000 years after his baptism. If it does end on January 29th, 2028. Now, I don't know if this is correct, that part of it, but again, just watch the video. Um, you got February 28th, 2028, 1,290 days after the great tribulation begins, which I'm not sure what that's about. And then blessed is he who makes it to the 1,335th day. So you have um, April 13th, 2028, which is that many days after the great tribulation begins. So I guess what he's saying, I don't know where he's saying the second coming comes into this because most people believe it's to fulfill the fall feasts. So I'm not sure what he's saying about that part. And that's where we have to definitely. But the thing I like is he said, it's, he's not saying thus saith the Lord. He's giving these dates. He's showing his, his, his breakdown, his study, his research to show himself approved as a workman. Isn't that beautiful? Like when somebody's trying to do that, and I know many of you are, I know many other YouTubers are, I know they do, but I so I'm not giving a day or hour. I'm saying he's giving this possible day. He's saying, I'm not saying thus saith the Lord. Isn't that refreshing just to hear? I'm not speaking on behalf of the eternal God at this moment. Now, because just think about it, guys. Like we have to be so careful when we say God told me or showed me. I like I said, I do like this guy's humble spirit. I love the fact that he researched like so much and that he's willing to hear input. Like he might like, I don't know where he has the second coming. But that said, from my little brief synopsis is not even, it's like when somebody does a movie review. It is not even close to giving you the emotional, amazing feeling that I had when I watched it. When you, he could be right. It could be that the Lord has revealed to him this just because we're about to go. And whether it be the six or whatever, like I should mention my friend who did um, show me this video. She is a friend on Facebook. She actually said the Lord, um, through basically brought her through different avenues 
you know, she was reading, uh, she was on unsealed.org, that website, and just brought it through different avenues to basically bring her to March 5th. So like I said, I don't, the Lord didn't show me a date. I've not been given a date. Um, but what he showed me lines up to what this guy is saying. Okay. It lines up. And I, like I said, I don't want you to just get so stuck on the six as much. It, it could be as much as it is more hope and encouragement that we are children of the light and that we are seen correctly. Cause that was a thing that was really making me think, wait, do we have 28 years? Like Benny Hinn said, he's Benny Hinn. Mean one, most people would say, yeah, so you don't believe him, <laughs> but which I don't watch Betty Hint, but I'm just saying at the same time, he has like millions of people who do believe him and billions probably. I don't know. No, maybe not billions, but millions. And then there's so many others. You have a ton of people like I, I mean, I just don't know. I don't know why they're not seeing what we seem to be seeing and who's deceived. Someone's deceived, you know, and that's the part I've been rolling over in my mind for the last couple of weeks, just really trying to be like, okay, Lord, where am I? Am I correct? Um, but this, I don't know, it blessed me a lot. So I know it'll bless you guys. So I'm sorry for going on and on and on. This is basically like a movie review, <laughs> but, um, like a brief synopsis, but not that brief because it's over 20 minutes. But anyway, I will link the full length thing within the description box and I'll put it in the comment section. Just click on it when you have the time, watch the whole thing, you know, give him input. He said he cares. So you can do that. Um, you know, let me know down below if you have any feelings on all of this, just thankful for you guys. And I love you guys. And I hope it encourages you because I think we're all a little confused. Everything that happened with the inauguration in the US, in the United States, everything that's happening with this pandemic, everything with everything. And we're like, God, what is happening? So I truly believe that this guy might be onto something. Um, at least he's very close. I'll say at least probably he's very close. And I think it was meant to be opened at this last moment that he, it was meant that we see this, um, you know, Daniel he shut the book. It was for the end. John, you know, I think Dan, one of them ate the book, Daniel ate the book. I think not John shut the book, but it was for the end, you know, and now it's here. That's why, you know, I don't despise prophecy. I don't, you know, we, many people are having many dreams and visions and I don't just shut them down, but you know, it's, it's hard because we are being deceived a lot right now. And I can tell, I know for sure. God's showing us something and sometimes he's really not. It's not him at all. It's our imagination. It's the enemy. It's whatever. It's our just thoughts. And sometimes it is God. So that being said, um, take this, you know, to the Lord in prayer. Um, but it's just pretty amazing. I mean, when you hear him explain things, it, it's really amazing. And I, anyway, I'll leave it at that. Um, I hope this was interesting for you guys and any comments, leave them down below. I love you guys and click on the link and it will really, really encourage you guys. And until next time, I will talk to you again soon. God bless and shalom.